بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear viewers Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to our program Building a Faith in Allah We're currently discussing the fact that the Islamic Sharia which is a product of our uh, applying what we've been commanded and staying away from what we've been prohibited has provisions in it that allow us to move forward in the world and to have mutual consultation and to do what the Sharia has commanded us to do. And we came to a, a point when we were talking about the COVID-19 vaccine. First of all, that it was the, the COVID-19 uh, vaccines currently don't have pork products in them. They don't have human elements in them. And this is because there have been symposiums, consultations held between Muslim scholars, pharmacologists, doctors, jurists who have come together and consulted about this issue that's affecting the world. And have previously, we have previously read some of their recommendations. And we come to the last recommendation after calling on the countries of the world. And, as, and those who go to Juma in various places hear the Imams ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift Hadi Waba Anna to please raise this pandemic from us, the Muslims, and the Alameen and all humanity. And among the recommendations, calling on Muslims to return to Allah, to repent even more, to seek for forgiveness and to give more charity and acts of obedience, and that Allah may spare this pandemic from us and the world. And may he accept those who have perished because of this pandemic. May Allah grant them his forgiveness and mercy and may he hasten the healing of the sick, protect us and all of mankind. For he is all capable. We ask Allah to hasten the end of this pandemic and may wellness, security and peace prevail over all people. May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his family and his companions. And the statements and recommendations were published in the International uh, 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 Islamic Fiqh Academy on Sunday, 26th of Rajab, 1442, corresponding to the 7th of March, 2021. So accusations that the Sharia does not adjust to times and places is incorrect. It has been adjusting and been applying the Sharia rules to our lives. Another accusation against the Sharia says that the punishment for theft is too drastic and involves humiliation to humans, perversion of reputation, and deformity of human extremities, meaning the hand. And you find mainly the criticisms against the Sharia are in the hudud. And these are the, these are the punishments that take place for crime. It's also a claim of those who oppose the Sharia that the punishment for theft does not conform to modern human civilization. And it's also a main claim against the laws, laws that they are uncivilized. The had, and these are the, these are the legal punishments for theft has been established by the Quran and by the Sunnah and by the ijma, the consensus of the Muslims, meaning their scholars. Allah says in his book, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والسارق والسارقة فاقتعوا عاديهما جزاء بما كسبا مكالا من الله والله عزيز حكيم Translated to mean cut off, meaning from the wrist joint, the right hand of the thief, male or female as a recompense for what they have committed, a punishment by way of example from Allah, and Allah is all-powerful, 
all wise. Found in Surah Al-Ma'ida, the table spread, Surah number 5, verse 38. The mother of the faithful, Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, she reported, An Aisha radiallahu anha qalit, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taqta'u yadu sariqin illa fi rubi dinarin fasa'ida. Muttafiqun alayhi. Aisha radiallahu anha reported that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a thief's hand should not be cut off except for a quarter of a dinar or more, that amount. Anything less than that doesn't require cutting of the hand. This is agreed upon, meaning that reported in Bukhari and Muslim. And the wording is from Muslim. The version of Bukhari reads, the hand of a thief is to be cut off for a quarter of a dinar or more. Here again, there's a limit. All Muslim scholars unanimously agree that the hand of the thief must be cut under certain circumstances. They had the punishment had been applied, the had punishment had been applied during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ and the rightly guided Khulafa and the subsequent reign in the Islamic countries. In short, the application of the penal system, the had, the hudud, punishment for a thief, is firm because Allah has commanded its application. Some non-Muslims question the practical feasibility of applying the command by alleging, claiming, that if such a punishment were applied in general, we would decapitate 50% of the population who would become invalid and jobless because their extremities would be deformed after the infliction of the punishment. This is assuming that 50% of the punishment of, 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 of the population in the Muslim world are thieves. This mistaken idea can be answered by examining the society of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and the rightly guided Khulafa of Abu Bakr, Umar, Rathman, wa Ali, radiallahu anhum. That society was known in general for having a high level of security and tranquility because they were applying the Sharia legislation precisely. When Sharia established the punishment for a thief, it was never cruel. Bearing in mind that the Islamic legislation, the Sharia, is the only revelation that does not reckon for cruelty, does not measure in cruelty. What is considered by some to be severe and cruel, believers look at it as a merit for the Sharia. It is the power and determination that is shown in the criminal system. These features are also observed in the worship, in ibadah, and in day-to-day -day transactions. The word rahma, meaning mercy, and its attributes are the most frequent in the Quran. It is binding on every Muslim before doing anything of any level of value to say, Bismillahir Rahman and Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, most gracious. Thus, mercy is an indispensable part of the religion of Islam. Therefore, the allegation of cruelty is alien to the Sharia ah and the Islamic culture. Theft, being a thief, is a very serious crime. If left uncontrolled among the population, their property, their lives and their honor will be at stake and therefore their lives will become a nightmare. A thief is just like a wild, hungry animal that attacks without warning or concern for victims. So much such a crime must be dealt with firmly in order to contain its adverse results. When we consider the cruelty of the punishment, we have to consider the cruelty of the crime and its impact on society. Everybody's stealing. Also, punishments are primarily enacted. They are primarily sent for the deterrence of stubborn people who will not be deterred by soft approach, not for reasonable people. 
And that's why if we examine the, the, the society of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, you, and the society, these cases were rare. They didn't happen every day, every month, every year. They were rare in a population of people because they were busy learning, studying, and practicing and growing their fear of Allah inside their hearts. So when they lived their lives, they lived their lives to please Allah, not to please every one of their hungry desires. That's unless they foresee these, these people who are harsh people, who are stubborn people, who won't stop. Thus, unless they foresee the harshness of the punishment, they will not be contained. Therefore, the allegations raised against the punishment of, of thief, of theft, are groundless as far as Islam and good reason are concerned. Another claim. Those who claim against the Sharia, against Allah's legislation, they say the punishment for adultery is too severe and it transgresses, uh, transgresses upon personal freedom. The supporters of this allegation state that the punishment for adultery, which is the flogging of unmarried and flogging and stoning of married adulterers, is harsh and cruel and is deemed to be an infringement upon the life and freedom of the human being and therefore is a violation of human rights. The rebuttal to this claim is the following. The had, the criminal punishment for adultery, has been established by the Quran, the Sunnah, and the consensus of the Muslim scholars. Thus, it is a command that no one can suspend. Islam established a punishment for adultery precisely and Allah revealed to the community of the believers and prohibited even the exposure to the temptations that lead to adultery, let alone the adultery itself and the fornication itself. Anything that would lead to it is prohibited. Allah says, Translated to mean, and come not near to unlawful sexual intercourse, meaning don't do things that bring you close to it. Rarely it is a fahisha, meaning anything that transgresses its limits and is a great sin and an evil way that leads to hell unless Allah forgives a person. This is found in Surah Al-Islaq, Surah number 17, verse 32. Imam Sa'adi, may Allah have mercy upon him, says in his tafsir of this verse, وَالنَّهِ عَنْ قُرْبَانِهِ أَبْلَغُ مِنَ النَّهِ عَنْ مُجَرْ فِعْرِهِ the prohibition of coming near to adultery is more intense than prohibiting the doing of the act because it includes keeping away from everything that could lead to it. Everything. Similar to someone who circles around a place that's forbidden to enter to the point where he might enter. This is especially the case when dealing with something that many human souls possess a strong urge toward. In this verse, Allah has described adultery and its disrespect as fahisha, meaning it is a sin that's obscene. It is obscene in the legislation. It is obscene to sound human intellect. It's obscene to human nature. This is because adultery includes taking the, an immodest path that violates the rights of Allah, that violates the rights of a woman, that violates the rights of her family, that violates her husband, as well as corrupting the lineage of the children by possibly mixing it with the lineage of the adulterer. And there are a number of other destructive results that occur from adultery, like the spread of disease. وَقَوْلُهُ وَسَأَسَبِيلًا عَلَى هَذَا الْذَنْبَ الْعَظِيمِ 
Allah completes this verse by saying, adultery is an evil way, meaning whoever takes the path of this great sin has taken an evil path. By the strict prohibition of Allah, Islam aims to protect the honor and the lineage of the family because the family is a core and basis of the society. The Messenger of Allah is reported to have said, An may munata zawjin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qadit sami'atu rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul la tazaru ummati bi khaylin ma lam yafshu fihim waladu zina fi la fasha fihim waladu zina fa yushiku an yu'ummuhum Allahu azza wa jal bi iqab Maymun, the wife of the Messenger of Allah said, I heard Allah's Messenger saying, My nation of believers will remain intact as long as adultery is not dominant and has illegitimate children in it. If illegitimate children become commonplace, Allah is likely to send down a chastisement. Adultery is one of the strongest means that lead to the deterioration of nations because it serves to cut off strong lineage of families, weaken social ties. It's scientifically established that intimate relationships outside of wedlock is one of the primary causes of serious disease, such as HIV, herpes, and other venereal diseases. In short, due to the adverse results that can be brought in by adultery, the punishment must be very harsh. For the following reasons, it is harsh. Adultery entails humiliation and degradation, and for this and for this reason, no one would accept it for his wife or next of kin. On one occasion, a young man came to the Messenger of Allah and asked permission to commit fornication, which is the adultery of a person who is not married. More about this topic, inshallah, in coming episodes. I'm Talib Abdullah from the Church of Broadcasting Authority. Thank you, dear viewers, for the privilege of your time. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.